Ask God some few questions. Today I'm not preaching, I'm talking. And sometimes one of the things I love doing after a powerful meeting, you see me going around laying hands on people still or asking them how is the service. And the reason why I do that is to get feedback from people. Ask God this question. And the answer he gave me is what I'm going to teach. How can we all know what is good, but we don't do it? Whilst we are doing what we are doing, we are hearing God's voice saying, you don't. But open up. We still will do what we want to do. We know there is punishment for it. We know it will not take us anywhere. But it looks like there is something stronger. And I asked the Lord Jesus, how come you came on earth? You were able to survive everything that man has not been able to survive. There is no temptation that Jesus didn't face or we are facing that Jesus didn't face. And Jesus gave me the answer. If we read First John chapter 3 verse number 2, he said, Beloved, can the media, I don't have to be telling you, I have moved. Can you push this in here? Beloved, now are we, give me the original King James, now are we the sons of God. We are sons of God. We are not going to be, we are. Now are we the sons of God. We are sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when we shall, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And the answer of God is that until you see God, you cannot live right. It's like I, I teach in leadership meetings. You can't tell people to come to church early when you come late. It is not what you say that they pick, it's what you do. I went, I went to a church to preach and after the pastor said, we've never received such an offering before. This offering is serious. I said, how? Your church is over 20 years. He said, never. That just a service people will give such like that. And I asked the pastor, do you give? He said, I give. I said, what's your highest giving? So my offering is like 100 cities, 200 cities. I said, okay. I said, I've given cars, motorbike. The thing I want to give now is house. And he said, he doesn't understand. And I said, yeah, you won't understand because if you are not a giver, nobody gives you. <laughs> what you are not, you can't have. You can only have what you are. So until you see God, until you see God, you don't know how to live. Because everything you are being told is just, I have heard. I have heard it. And hearing doesn't change like seeing. Go and ask those who are artists. And sometimes they do criminal drawings or whatever. They say, describe the person for me. He has long ears, big nose. And you actually describe the person is drawing. And tell the person to put a picture of the person you want drawn and put it there. The one you bring an image is easier to be copied than the one you are talking about. So what is happening to the body of Christ is that Satan has intentionally made it that you can be a Christian but never encounter God and you quote you a scripture and you say that God told Moses, Exodus chapter 33, I believe maybe verse number, let's look at is it 20, that no one can see my face, no man. The new King James say, no, um, the one, 
Let me read. Good. And he said, thou cannot see my face. Can you shift this piece here a bit? Because for there shall no man see me and live. So people said, if you see God, you will die. You will see. He said, no man can see my face and live. No man can see my face and live. Of course, no man can see God's face and live. Because before you see him, you must die. But I read about a man also in the Old Testament that God told him to look at his face. So if we some 27, I believe verse number 8. Give me some 27, verse number 8. is. Is it on the screen? When thou see it, that is God saying, seek ye my face. My heart said on thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. So here is Two scriptures that is contradicting each other. Here is Moses saying that God told him that the day you see my face, you shall do what? You shall what? Die. And here is um, um, David saying that God also said, seek ye my face. So, And he said in his heart that I will seek your face. That means that if God said you see my face, you will die. He is not saying don't come and seek my face. But what he's trying to say is that until you are dead, you can't see him. So we have missed Apply the scripture that God doesn't want anybody to see him. No. The truth is that God knows that until you see him, you can never serve him. Now, if you come to me and you come to my office and see how my officers serve me, when you come and you want to serve me, you serve me likewise. I had a story which was so funny about a man of God who I had every time he's doing counseling, he will let somebody sign a check of $100,000 and he'll put it on his desk. So when you come and you are talking, you tell him, oh, somebody just left here and gave me $100,000. And when you hear that someone has sowed a seed, is he sleeping? Don't. Don't try. If you come and see that someone has sowed a seed of $100,000 and it's on the table, you yourself, if you're bringing 10 cities, you will change your mind. So it's a psychological way of telling you so higher. So he just put the check there. And so somebody said 100,000. Hey, then let me do 10,000. Except you don't have it. Seeing it alone, you will give it. And why? Because when a person meets God, the image of God can stick in your system than what somebody said. Uh, Is it true or is it not true? Let me, let me prove this to you. Years ago, I went to a school. I think it's at Don't Secondary School to go and preach. And I preached powerfully. I left. Three, four years later, I was going to a bridge to do a crusade. At Medina Station, a lady saw me and stopped me and said, man of God. I don't, I don't remember her. She has grown, all grown. She said, you don't remember? No, no, I'm the SU president. I said, oh, you came to our school this year? I said, ah, it's true. I said, I remember that this was the message I preached. She doesn't remember the message. But she remembers my face. She remembers the dress I put on. She remembered all my actions. But the message I preached did not stick in the head. But she can remember. If I tell you to tell me the message I preached last week, you might not remember. But if I tell you what dress was I wearing, it's most likely you remember. Because we are people who observe things and keep it. That is why um, First John said, the things we have seen, we have handled, do we declare to you. You cannot declare only things you have heard. People want to sing. So you must make up your mind as a Christian if you want to go further in life that from today, you want to see God. I know you will understand. You want to see God. How many of you want to see God? Now, many can see God. The first thing you must know is that you can never decide to see God until God has invited you. I said, well, may I decide to meet God? <laughs> the desire to meet is not you. Okay. 
Then, say, then how can God meet me if I am not fitting? Another way. If you are going God's direction, he will meet you. If you are going God's direction. It doesn't matter whether you are a believer or an unbeliever. If you are going God's direction, he will meet you. In other words, let's take it that God decides to take this path. And you also decide to go this path. You will definitely meet. So, so many people sometimes also decide, I want to be this. I want to get here. And God said, wow, let me meet you then. Am I teaching somebody here so far? Am I talking to somebody here so far? Now, how many of you have ever desired? I don't know what is wrong with my microphone. May I be delivered? I foresaw it coming and it came. Uh Let's go. How many of you have ever desired to go on a date with God? One day, a man by name Enoch. Genesis chapter 5, 22. This guy was wise, so he made sure he finished giving birth. Genesis 5, 22. You see, I pray that you will be sensitive enough like I am. Before my microphone went out, I could know that it's going off. And Enoch walked with God after. The guy, after he had given birth to Methuselah, the one who lived longest on earth. 300 years and beg, begat. You see, your, this screen is giving me half bow. I said it. It's giving me half bow. Okay. Begat sons and daughters. Verse 23. And all the days of Enoch was 365 years, 24. The guy lived longer. Hey. Let's go on. 24. And Enoch walked with God. He was not. For God took him away. He went for a walk with God. A walk with God. He one day decided that he wants to go on a walk with God. And he has not returned. You, you come to church two hours. You want to go home. This guy decided that he was going to walk a walk with God. Let me give an example. It's like I have given birth to Rukaya. And Rukaya says, Daddy, I'll follow you every day. I'll be with you. So no problem. And Rukaya falls in love with Pastor Victor. And when Rukaya fell in love with Pastor Victor, Pastor Victor tells Rukaya that you can't work here. So before you know, Pastor Victor buys a plane ticket and he and she, they run to Germany and they don't return. So Enoch left his wife and children who went for a walk with God and has not returned. Now, what to make a woman leave everything? It's if you didn't have children and wife, you say that, oh, maybe you're not a brown country. What to make a man take your seat? A man leave everything he has on this earth and go for a walk and never return. Then that walk was a serious walk. I've seen parents who give birth to children and their children in loop. And they loop because they see they are in love. They look for them, they can't find it. The next time you see their Instagram and they are in London. Say, hey, my child. How did you vanish? Somebody has buried their dream. Somebody has put in certain things into the brain of this person. And the thing that, that the person has shown that your daughter or your son, you have never shown the person before. May you encounter God in a certain way that you will go on a journey that you will never want to return. When the Paul got angry, Paul, I always thought that Paul didn't marry. Because he was ugly or not no woman like her. But one day Paul told the church that, listen, I can be, not that is the Clement in church. It's not Clement and go, he mentioned, married. Peter, them, they are married. I could have married. But why was Paul not married? Paul encountered God on the road to Damascus. 
And on that day, after that day, he said to himself, to live is Christ and to die is gain. In other words, if he dies, he will make it to heaven. He will encounter God forever. But he's just alive to just take care of the system. So now someone would then say that, how can I also get on that journey with God? I many of want to go on a journey with God. <laughs> now, those of who came from my leaders meet, I gave you 15 things you need to die to. It starts from there. You can never go on a journey until certain things in your life are dead. Some say dead. Now, now it's either you kill it or God kills it for you. I realize that God doesn't mind embarrassing you. As long as that will bring you his attention. God doesn't mind every helper in your life disappearing until you go down on your knees and start praying. And you are binding witches and you are binding wizards. And you are binding them and they are not, God is not minding you. It's as if the name of Jesus doesn't work. Why is the name of Jesus not working? Because he's the one who's orchestrating it. Because you prayed a prayer, Lord, anywhere, anything you want to do with me, I give you my life. God said, thank you. That's all I needed. <laughs> oh, amen? Oh, amen? Your amen is not good at all. So here you are. You are there. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you open, I will come in. And eat with you. And you with me. Dinner. There is always an invitation that God gives when he knocks at your door. Some say, does God knock doors? Yes, he does. Where is your door? Your door is your heart. Why? Genesis chapter 4 verse 7. So if I've not touched anything yet, right? <laughs> Cain, God told Cain, sin is lying at your door. If you do well, will you not be accepted? If you do not, if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and he desires to have you, but you should rule over it. Something is knocking. Somebody is calling sweetheart, baby pie. Are you cake? Are you both root? And that baby pie, sweetheart. You see that now you, you, you are there and throughout the night you are thinking about this person. You go to his Facebook. You go to his status and you are watching his picture. Because the person is telling you, no, I love you. I need you. You're my baby. You are my only mosquito in my net. And this thing is entering into your system. It's going through your system. It is more than a year. For instance, COVID injection that you have received. It is passing through you. You have begun to have all the symptoms of this person. I'm not preaching well. The symptoms of this person. You've not yet had a date with this person. No, but the knock, the knock. Call, call, call. Hey! Obama, what a woman. Where did I pass to meet such a woman? Hey! Who is your mother? Who is your father? I want to marry you. So come up for there you go. Then you are meeting this guy every day. Now you start doing a research. You are researching the guy. You are researching. If not, the guy doesn't speak to you again. You are finding where does he work? What does he do for a living? Who is his father? Who is his mother? Why are you doing a research? Because the thing, the person, the knock, you have opened up. And now even though the person has not yet come in, the day the person should say, I propose, you say yes. Why? Because you have already opened up to the person. Now let me ask you a question. How many times has God knocked and you never opened? I want to hear your, you hold my life. What when you know you? He said, God told John in the island of Patmos, we have let's in chapter 4 verse 1. He said, come. Come forth hither and I will teach you what will happen hereafter. There is something that will happen tomorrow 
that God can never show you until you move from where you are to go deeper. So you told John, let's read it together. I'm sure it's on the screen. Have they brought it? John, oh, you are still in Genesis. Be fast, oh. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. After these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here. Look at somebody, come up here. Come to church. Come to Feast of Miracles. Come for first service. Come for second service. Come up here. Somebody, I am meeting you. I would tell because the thing has not worked on you. When you have a date, and somebody tells you that we are going here, you brush your teeth specially. He's not said he's going to kiss you yet. But you are looking at probability. You wear nice panties and bra. Brand new boxes and brand new singlet. Yeah, there's nothing to show that you are going to have sex, but you are preparing in case. You the man, you take money in case the lady is an extra gluten. In case she is a lot. You, you borrow money from here and here and put it in your pocket in case you go there and she says she doesn't like the food at papaya. She likes the one at, you know. Then you know that you can't embarrass yourself. So you are prepared to meet this person at any level. I think I'm not preaching well. You are very prepared. And this lady go and do the nails. Special palms. Change like three dresses. And if the guy calls and says, I'm sorry, can we make it next week? You pay for the hair, you pay for the nail, you have to pay, you have to pay, you have to pay. You know what it has cost you? The guy said, but it didn't come on. So why are you angry? No, you don't understand. There are certain things that has been done just before they spend your money. It is called expenditure before expenditure. You, this week we are fasting. You have told yourself already you will fast. There is no expenditure before expenditure. So if God disappoints you in your miracle, you will not get disappointed. It will not do anything to you because you did not package yourself to meet God. Uh, am I teaching well here? You need to kid yourself. This man who has gone to borrow car, rent car, paid for it. He, he heard that you like long journey. You don't like short journey. So this date, maybe you say, let us go to Kumasi. And maybe too, he wants to perform in bed well. So that whole week, he's been taking extra vitamins. There is nothing to show that anything will happen on, but all these things are in case. Oh, true. Is it true? Or it's not true. Prevention is better than safety first. In case. Many are not prepared to meet God. Christians have never been prepared to meet God. We have only been prepared to ask things from God. As if God is a father Christmas. And you know this? You know what? One of the things that embarrasses and kills relationship, when you meet a first time with somebody and say, can you buy me credit? My rent is due. Now, whether it's from the male or the female, as soon as you start any relationship like that, the person begins to have this mind concerning you. You are the wrong one. It doesn't matter how good you are. 
straight away, the first impression you give to the person that you don't want a relationship, you are a thing. As long as I can provide, you are there. And many get themselves disconnected from God right from day one of their salvation because they are coming to serve God because of what they will get and not because they want to build their relationship. Is it true or is it not true? But when you meet somebody, you can see that a person's car and everything. This girl is coming from a good home. It's coming from everything. She has money or he has money. When you meet, you try as much as possible to be discreet. You don't talk about your needs. You pretend everything is alright. Your shoe is borrowed, but you don't say it. Everything you are wearing is borrowed, but you just want to make sure that this lady sees you in the right light. So you go along. How are you doing? Yeah, you are. You flow. You do everything to make the lady believe in you. When it is oak, oh, can I come and see your place? Oh, not yet. No, I want to live holy. I don't want any temptation. Oh, what? The place you are staying is a rented press. You know very well that you can't fit into that. So you need to hide who you are. You want the person to build a relationship with you to a certain extent. When a relationship is built to a certain extent and you get to know who I am, the true me, then I know that you don't go away because now you know me for me. But I can't expose myself too early. Many just come to God and the next thing they need is that they need car. And so if, if they say put your requests down, it will even shock God. What he has not even given to the Pope, that's what you want. God, I heard you were able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask. Of course, you've heard that, but that is an aspect of him. That is not him. That is the reward he gives to them that seek him diligently. But you are after the reward not the person. And so when God gets to know, something, all God does to you is that he gives you a tip of the iceberg. He just gives you a bit of the crumbs. And when you get the, the crumbs, you start showing your character. Like last week I told you about a guy who went to church, crippled, and got healed and stopped church. When they asked him, he said, have you seen anybody who goes to the hospital and is healed, delivered, and still lies in the hospital before? I came for a baby. I have one. What am I doing every day in church? I, it's the baby that brought me to church. It is husband and wife. I wanted to marry. The, the day I was invited, as soon as I saw that lady, I realized that she is the one I can marry. So I kept coming. Now that I have married her, what is my use in the church? I joined choir because of that. So what is the use? I'm not coming again to choir practice because what I wanted, I've got. And God just tells you that, yeah, I just introduced one aspect to you. There is so much of me that I can give you. But you see, because you are just not yielding, I have to hide the rest away from you. Because if I can't have your heart, I can't have your all. Many disappoint God on their first date. Can I tell you this? Back to Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. You see that the dinner or the date is two way. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone comes in, allows me in, he comes to your house first. The first date, he comes to your place. Then the second date, you go to his place. Now, since God visited you, have you visited him? Oh, read, read. Behold, let's read together. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and he will serve with me and he with me. So it's two way. You with him, he with you. So the first person who comes to knock is him. He comes in with an invitation. Sweetheart, can I go out with you? So, oh, no, can we come? Since you are in my house, can I serve you? How did you serve God the first day you encountered him? How did you serve him? You heard a message. You gave your life to Jesus. You heard a message. You said, come into my heart. How did you receive him? How did you receive him? Even me, a normal common FDL, if I decide to come to your house, you'll bring out the best plates. 
You bring us the best meal. You will make sure that everything in your house is the best of the best. That is what you put at the table. Can I ask you a question? When you met God, what have you given God that is your best? You always give me the leftover. Minya dachia is a leftover. If I have time, 